QuickBooks Desktop 2023 internal or external report? Let's do it within two. It's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Sample Rock Castle Construction Practice File provided by QuickBooks. Going through the setup process we do every time. Maximizing the home page. View drop down. Hide icon bar. Open windows checked off. Open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down. Company and financial. Opening up the major financial statements starting with the P and the L. Changing the range in 10124 to 123124, January to December 2024. Customize it, fonts and numbers, it change it to 12, it okay, it's yes, it okay. Next one, reports drop down, company and financial, the balance sheet. Hitting the drop down fiscal year to customize the numbers and the fonts to change it to 12, okay? Yes, okay. There it is. That's what we do every time. Those are the major two financial statement reports. All other reports pretty much giving some items, some expansion, some more detail on one or multiple line items of these two reports right here. So we've been taking a look at all the reports in essence in the report center, or at least going over them, reviewing them. Now we want to be thinking about what are we going to do with those reports? Which of those reports are going to be internal reports and uh, which of those reports might be the external reports as we go through them we will add them to our month end kind of report summary in our worksheet and think about how we might present them either with pdf files printing them emailing them as single files or attachments or exporting them to excel possibly using excel and a pdf printer to create one giant document that has all of the files in it in a pdf format so let's go up to the report center again. If we go to the reports drop down and we go into the report center, we're going to maximize the report center. You'll recall that the major financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, all these other reports that we've been reviewing in this section have been basically given more detail on those two uh, reports. So the major reports are in the company and financial area. We've been memorizing those reports here. Now, our strategy on the memorized reports, I'm going to hit the uh, by, by list drop down, has been maybe we want to group our reports together, say we're a bookkeeper or say we're providing reports to a supervisor, for example, and we want to have the same reports that are going to be presented to them at the end of each month, at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year. We might have a different one of these per month per quarter per year because we might have a different list of reports depending on how many months have passed, how many quarters have passed, and of course the year-end reports could differ as well. If we customize these reports, formatting them, putting the style that we want, changing the fonts that we want to have in there, changing the, the whether they have pennies included or not, you know, and all that kind of stuff, and then order them, then we can open these reports at the end of the month, order them as we would like and provide them to our client in an efficient way. So that's one way we can use this. We also might have internal reports. And a lot of the reports we've been looking at lately have are generally more internal reports. Those you might, if I go to the edit memorize list up top, you might have another category up top for your internal reports that you want uh, up here. And, and those would be reports that you're gonna use as you do the data input possibly and then you want to be able to access them as quickly as possible in the format that you want to see them, which might differ from the format that you want to provide them to customers in. You might use different fonts or whatever if you provide them to the customer. You might remove the pennies when you take them to the customer. Maybe you don't want to do that on your side, but maybe you still want to increase the font size all the time 
for example, so that you don't have to do that every time increasing the font size because you're getting really annoyed that I'm doing it every time. You're like, would you stop with that every time you do a new presentation? It's ridiculous. But so, so then you could do that. So let's go through this. If I close this back out then, and we just look at some of these reports, if I go to the standard tab, and let's go back to showing it in a grid format, we had the profit and loss reports, and we saw those. We got the profit and loss comparative reports. We've made those in prior presentations, so pretty much everything having to do with the profit and loss we talked about, and those are types of reports that we might then include for in our month-end reports, external type of reports that we might provide to a client, for example. And then we've got the income and expense reports. These are going to be kind of related uh, to the income statement. And then we took a look at our graph down here. And the graphs could be something that probably would not be used as much internally. This is something that if you're going to use it, it might be an external report that you include in your package to the client, which we talked about possibly how you could uh, add that. And we'll, we'll maybe look at that in a, in a future graph, not that graph. And then you got the balance sheet reports. Clearly, this is the other major report. You've got the summary report we talked about in the past, external report, great report to provide to customers for a summary before diving deeper in. You got some other graphs. We didn't take a look at that particular graph, but we saw some of the graphs. You got the cash flow report. This is another one which could be used internally as well, of course, the cash flow report, but it's also a major financial statement report that we might include in uh, the external report. So let's go ahead and open up the cash flow report and let's include that one. So let's do our customization with it. So if we were to customize it, we're going to say, all right, let's go to the header and footer. Let's get rid of the date prepared, time prepared, these two, like as has been our normal thing. Let's put our name in the footer, which is our normal external reporting stuff. And then I'm going to go to the fonts and numbers, change the font. Let's bring it up to 12. OK. OK. And then I'm going to put the parentheses around the bracketed numbers. I'm going to make it red on the brackets and I'm going to remove the pennies. That's been our custom. So there it is. And so if this is how I want it to be shown, I might save this. Let's change the date range up top from 010124 to 123124. And then I'm going to memorize it. Let's memorize it. This is in the format of our external reports. So I'm going to say, let's put this in our, our uh, client month end reports. Boom. So there's that one. It takes a picture of it. And I probably should have numbered it, but I, I won't get into that right now. And then I'm going to also export it to our Excel worksheet. So I'm going to go to the Excel drop down, create a new workbook. If you, if you don't have an Excel worksheet, you can follow along with this exporting process. We're going to use the Excel worksheet to then create our PDF file with all this stuff on one PDF file. I'm going to take it to an existing workbook. If you don't have one, then, then you can just make a new workbook and you can still follow along that way if you so choose. Or you can just watch because it's very entertaining. This is entertaining stuff, you know. So in any case, we're going to then make this large. And so then I can pull this to the right. I'm going to grab that pull it to the right, going to check it out to see if it fits on one page. I usually do that by going to the page layout and then back out to the normal. It looks like it is indeed fitting on one page. I'll double click on the tab and call it uh, call it cash flow. Now notice the cash flow, you might say, or you might want the cash flow somewhere over here after like the balance sheet reports before we get into anything else possibly. I'm just going to keep it in the order that it's in right here. So you can think about what order you'd want to put it in. And then once done, we can file up top. We can print this thing using our cute PDF printer. I use the cute PDF printer, which is free. You could find online. It's your favorite browser. And then I can print the whole thing, print the entire worksheet. And there's 29 pages on it now. And it would print to a PDF printer, allowing us to basically then attach one file provide it to someone or put it in a OneDrive, a cloud drive or something like that. Okay, let's close it out. Let's do another one. Or let's check out our other report. Let's close this out. We're going to then say, okay, there's the cash flow. When we, when we went into the customers and receivables, 
you've got the AR aging. This report is usually more of an internal report. So if we were gonna if we were gonna adjust the AR aging report, if I open this one up, then I'm usually thinking unless the customer kind of wants this report, it's usually something that we, we would use internally. It would kind of depend on your circumstances. But if I'm gonna use it internally, then again, I might wanna filter it for my internal needs, which might be something like, maybe I customize it and I go to the header and footer and say, I, I still don't like the date and the time. I don't really need that. Maybe I go to the fonts and numbers and maybe I like it at 12 again here and okay. And maybe I do want the pennies this time because it's an internal report, but I still like the brackets possibly. And I personally do maybe negative numbers red for them to stand out. So now that's what that's what I want it to look like on an internal basis, possibly, and possibly 12's too large. Maybe, maybe I say maybe I'll make it make it 11 for my internal report because it's I'd like it to be pretty close to one page wide. That looks pretty good. And so then, if I was to save that, I would save it to my internal reports. Maybe memorize ag aging. Save it to my internal reports. Okay. And now, if I'm working internally, every time I go up top, I might go to the reports. I might go to then my my memorized my memorized reports, internal reports, and boom, there's the AP, and it's just that's just the way I like it. I don't have to do anything crazy to it. So then we've got these other ones, the graphs. Notice that we added the graphs into our uh, into our Excel worksheet by actually. Let's, let's open up the Excel worksheet so I can show you. Here's the Excel worksheet. Uh, QuickBooks, QuickBooks data, rock, castle construction. In our Excel worksheet, we actually exported the data here so that we can see our graphs. It's not here. Here's our graphs. So we, we put those into our workbook that way. And that's the way I would recommend doing the graphs, but you could copy or just take a cut of the graph if you want to include that in say your month in reports, I would say those would definitely be external type of reports. Typically, you got the open invoices, which again, probably an internal report, collection reports, typically internal average days summary, usually be an internal kind of report. And then if we scroll down, we got the customer balance. So the customer balance summary, usually internal and usually we'll be using the uh, customer center as we've seen before so these are generally the internal reports and then the lists again typically internal on the sales items you got the sales uh, by customer and then sales by customer detail usually these are uh, you would think these would generally be an internal uh, type of report but maybe it's something that you'd provide that you that a customer would want this is another one where we made a graph on it and that might be a nice graphical way to show it. Again, we made those graphs in Excel, so but you could copy and paste this graph, for example, or use that report and, and that make that an, an external report. Sales by item, so these would generally be the internal reports. But again, the customer might want to see that. If you were to give it to the customer, you might give them that sales data, again, in kind of like a graphical format, which could be an, a nice external way to show that uh, those reports. You got the job. I won't go into that vendor payable, the AP summary. That's probably our major internal report, which again, if you use that all the time, you'd be opening that up. Maybe you format it for internal use. Maybe you customize it. Maybe you go to here and the header and footer. Maybe you get rid of the date and the time prepared. Maybe you go to the fonts and numbers. Maybe you change the font to 11 again and say, okay, Maybe you like brackets. Maybe you like red numbers for negatives. I still want the pennies though. And then I'm going to say, okay. And so that looks pretty good. So maybe I save that on the internal reports. And if you say maybe, if you say maybe one more time, I'll stop. I'll stop. Maybe, maybe I'll stop. In any case, we're going to say this is going to be an internal report. Okay, that's it. I'm not listening anymore. That last maybe we're going to if I go to the memorized reports here, then you can see that we have the internal reports listed this way here. They're listed thusly, as you can see. So back to the standard tab. So that was the vendor stuff. 
let's bring it back to this view. So this uh, AP, uh, this might be an external way that you show the vendors. So you're probably not gonna give them th this report, but you might give them that, which again, we made in Excel using, using Excel graphs, which I think is a better way to do it. These are internal reports, vendor balance and summary in detail. You're probably gonna use the report center though, so you might not use those all the time. And then you got the 1099s, which would be your year end reports, which are usually internal in order to create the 1099s. And then you got your purchases. Let's go down to the to the inventory. So inventory reports are typically generally going to be the the uh, the internal reports. So you might open up the major one, like an inventory valuation summary report, for example, and you might customize that for your internal use and say, I would like this to have no date, no time, fonts and numbers, maybe bring it on up to 11 again and put, say, change it, por favor, parentheses and brackets, red numbers, boom. That's too big, it's too big. Customize it, fonts and numbers, you gotta get just right. Just like, what's your name with the three bears? She wants the, the, middle, the middle one, the one in the middle. Let's do that one. Let's save it. We'll we'll say memorize it and put that on the internal reports so that every time I open that, I don't have to I don't have to do that every time. I just go to reports and go boom, memorize reports and internal reports and there they are. Easy, easy, easy. Inventory stock status. So these are usually all going to be the internal reports that we would be using possibly customizing for our internal use. Payroll reports are generally internal reports, but you know you might, you might be in a system if you're doing payroll that they want to give you the payroll summary reports, which might be this one uh, primarily, which you can give externally. But again, you'd probably format these internally, which would only be here if you had payroll turned on. The banking reports, deposit detail, check detail, these are usually internal reports, which you might not need as much because you might be just going to the check register for that activity or the detail, the transaction detail that you would drill down on on the bank statement. The reconciliation report is an internal report typically, but uh, usually you will just uh, do the, re the reconciliation process is usually the important thing to do in that an auditor might ask for those. The trial balance is a major internal report that you might use all the time. So this one might be worth customizing. And this one you can bring back up to 12, I think on the fonts, you can go to the headers and footers, date, time, font, let's bring it on up to 12. And then say, so I can see it. I can see it, I need to be able to see it or else I can't do nothing. Why is that basis over here? Get that out, get out of here, bases. So there we go. That's, let's memorize that one as an internal report. Internal report, boom, shock locker. So we got the general ledger, that's usually an internal report, transaction detail, typically internal, journal report, typically internal. You might not use them all the time and you might have specific uses for these when you do use them. The trial balance you would use all the time possibly, so you could format that one. GL and the transaction detail by account, you probably only go into then when you're when you're looking for something specific, so you might not customize them. Same with the journal report and the audit trail. These are all kind of things that you probably aren't gonna use all the time. You might be going into them to filter those reports and therefore you might not do any special customization for the internal reports and tax reports and so on, budgets. These could be external reports if you're, you're doing the budget. If you are doing the budget and providing the budget, then the main report that you would probably be looking at is this one, the budget versus actual uh, report here. And then you might, you might do this on a month by month, or you got the same kind of problems with this as you do with an income statement in that, do you, how you wanna set up the budget. Do you wanna do it month by month? Do you wanna do a quarter? Uh, budget depending on you know what quarter you're in uh, and so on and so forth so you got the budget here and you might save this let's just save this as 12 let's go 01 01 24 12 31 24 let's customize this one and let's say header and footer this will be an external report so I'll say get rid of the time the date the report basis 
put our name in the footer, and then fonts and numbers. Bring it on up to 12. I'm not, that might be too big. Let's make, well, I gotta do the, the same font size. 12 parentheses, no pennies this time, red, and let's check it out. So there it is, and then I might save that as an external report, memorize it, boom, and month end report. And again, this might not be the only one I do, because like I say, I might want different budget reports depending on where we are in the period. A month, month by month budget, quarter by quarter budget, a year a total budget, and so on. So there is that. And so now if I went to my reports drop down and I went to my memorized reports, I got my external reports that I can just put together easily. I've got my internal reports that I can get to easily, or I can go to my report center and memorize reports and then see them as a list possibly. Here are my, my uh, external reports that I can put together on a month by month basis. If that's when I'm giving my reports to my, my clients, I can edit these items. You'll recall, I can number these if I, if I want to renumber them, for example. And so then, and then I could, uh, so then I can put them in order. I can also drag them to put them in the order that I want to put them in. I won't go into that in detail. We've seen that in the past, closing that back out. And then I've got my internal reports, which I also, if I wanted to try to order them in the, the, air, the how I use them most, I might edit these reports and say, okay, in the internal reports, I use the AR aging, you know, the second most or something like that. You might reorder the reports to make it as easy as possible.